All right, just wanted to do a video explaining how Roman Catholicism totally undermines the supremacy and sufficiency of Jesus Christ over the New Testament church, because Roman Catholicism is essentially a man-centered, man, man foundation-built religion. They build their foundation off fallible men instead of Jesus Christ. Their foundation, they claim, is the Apostle Peter, who himself was not was not perfect. He still was fallible and made mistakes. But Roman Catholicism, like I said, undermines the the uh, supremacy of Jesus Christ and also the sufficiency of Jesus Christ to purify his uh, saints. It's that simple. Let's read from the, uh, this is from the New St. Joseph's uh, Baltimore, or sorry, New, New St. Joseph's First Communion Catechism, what it says about Mary. Because essentially the Catholic Church says that Mary is the one who purifies your sins and makes you holy, which is total blasphemy by the way. But it says here in the New St. Joseph First Communion Catechism, says that Mary offered up Jesus Christ to the Father. It says, The Father in heaven was pleased with this love, so he raised the body of his Son from the dead. He opened the gates of heaven to welcome his Son. Mary gave Jesus to the Father for us. And that's from uh, Lesson 7 and page 33 of the New St. Joseph First Communion Catechism. And of course, the Catechism of the Catholic Church says that Mary is who makes the church holy and pure. It says, but while, the, while in the most blessed version, the church has already reached that perfection, whereby she exists without spot or wrinkle, the faithful still strive to conquer sin and increase in holiness. So, and so they turn their eyes to Mary. In her, the church is already the all holy. This, that's from paragraph 829 of the Catechism of the Catholic Church. So they are saying that Mary is who makes the church holy and pure. Sorry, I got a bit of an itch on my nose there. But what does the Holy Scripture say? Well, the Holy Scripture show that Jesus Christ is who purifies the saints, and he did it by himself, by the way. There was no co-mediator or co-intercessor. Jesus Christ did it all himself, and Jesus Christ is the, is the mediator, and he offered himself up on the sacrifice, and his sacrifice is once and done. Okay, so let, what say the scriptures? Okay, never mind Catholic tradition, which goes against the word of God. What does the word of God say? Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. By himself. There was no co-mediator or Mary being the co-intercessor or whatever. No. Jesus Christ did it all himself. Why? Because Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He doesn't need anyone's help to do... to When he, when he was doing a sacrifice, he wasn't needing anyone's help to do it. It's that simple. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25 to 27. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25 to 27. Wherefore he is able to save also to save them to the uttermost that come unto, come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth, to make intercession for them. For such an high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than made higher than the heavens, who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins, and then for the people's. Uh, for this he did once when he offered up himself. Again, there's no co mediator. Jesus Christ did it himself. Unlike what the Catholic Church is saying in, in, their, in their catechisms. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11 to 14. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11 to 14. But Christ, being come a high priest of good things, to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his, by his own blood, he entered once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Uh, for if the blood of bulls and, and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctify to the, peering, the, to the purifying of the flesh, sorry, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself, offered himself, as it says there, uh, without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. It's that simple. He did it himself. Uh, Hebrews... Uh, sorry, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 24 to 28. And you notice the, the, the common theme of he did it once, he died once, he offered himself once, meaning there is no perpetual, continual re-sacrifice in the Mass. Okay? It was a once and done sacrifice. Jesus Christ said it is finished. John 19, 30. Uh, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 24 to 28. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet, nor nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with the with blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once 
in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Uh, and as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this the judgment, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that, that, sorry, that look to, for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Not good at reading on a computer, but we, we notice that. Notice how in verse uh, 25 talks about how the, the priest having to do the continual sacrifice. Hmm, kind of like the Roman Catholic Mass, having to continually re-sacrifice Christ. But if that were true, verse 26 talks about then then Christ essentially would still be on the cross today. You see, if you're having to do a re-sacrifice every single week at the Mass, which by the way, which is what the Catechism in paragraph 1300 and I believe it's 67 and 68, if I'm not mistaken, uh, teaches that it's a re-sacrifice. Well, if that's the case, then Christ would still be on the cross today. Which, which is what verse 26 says, which makes sense why they have their, their satanic crucifixes, by the way, because those crucifixes, it's not just simply the, to represent Christ. It's essentially saying that their Christ is still on the cross because he, his sacrifice is not finished. It's every single week at the mass. Uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10 to 14. Another scripture destroying this heresy that, first of all, Mary purifies sins, which is blasphemy, and also this heresy of the Catholic Mass, too. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10 to 14. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all, and every high priest standeth daily ministering and offering, uh, sorry, offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. From henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool, for by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Notice also uh, verse 11, the high priest standeth daily ministering and offering. See, that, that's the Catholic priest there. He's having to continually re-offer that, re that sacrifice and re-sacrifice Christ. But Jesus Christ said it was once for all. It's, it's a once and done thing. So those, those scriptures and many others just destroy this Roman Catholic uh, blasphemous doctrine that Mary somehow purifies your sins and also uh, this undermining of the supremacy and sufficiency of Jesus Christ by the Roman Catholic Church. Roman Catholicism is a satanic false religion. Roman Catholicism is, uh, you see, Calvinists will accuse people who reject their system of being man-centered. No, Roman Catholicism is what you call man-centered religion. It's not Christ-centered, it's man-centered. Roman Catholicism is Mystery Babylon, as in Revelation 17 and 18. Don't be deceived by Roman Catholicism. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.